Hello, everyone. This is Liz, one of Dairy Public Library's resident film nerds, uh, but I would say the resident expert on trash and cult films, and um, one of the reference librarians um, at the Dairy Public Library. Welcome to Monday, and uh, sorry for the delay. We might move this to four o'clock now in the coming days, but uh, it is director day, and today I'm going to talk about a personal favorite director of mine and one of the most celebrated directors in the world right now. You've actually probably heard about him because he has had a lot of US success. Pedro Almodovar, or if you've seen his films, he simply goes by Almodovar. Um, you've probably, um, more than likely, you've probably either heard of or seen Volver talk to her or all about my mother, but we'll get to that later. So who is Pedro Amadovar? He's a um, Spanish director born 1949 in Spain. So he was born at the time of Franco and he had his rise to frame and, pr and rise to prominence in filmmaking during La Movida Madrelina. Uh, which was a cultural renaissance that took place in Spain after the end of Franco's reign. Um, as with a lot of fascist dictatorships, uh, art and culture were suppressed. So this was brought about with a not only a cultural renaissance, but a renaissance of changing social mores, a lot more openness to people of different identities. And Pedro, being a gay man, uh, definitely thrived in that kind of a culture. And he's someone who grew up loving movies. He um, lists Louis Brunel as one of his influences. Um, and he got started pretty early making films, like just when he turned um, 30 was when he made his first movie in 1980 called Pepe Lucy Bomb. But he pretty much had to wait not quite a decade, but until 1987, until he had his big international hit, which was Woman on the Verge of a Nervous Breakdown, which if you have not seen that movie, you absolutely should. Um, and he kind of had became sort of a, not a celebrity, but definitely a known director at that point. And he had another hit, Time Me Up, Time Me Down, with very well-known actor Antonio Banderas. And that is a... Um, a dark romantic comedy kind of a take on Stockholm Syndrome. Definitely a little kind of problematic, but it also acknowledges those problematic natures. And if anything, it kind of plays on older movies that played that whole idea straight. Um, his big, he had pretty much his big like international award attention in the late 90s to early aughts. So he had like three in a row, three or four in a row, big movies that hit it big with awards. And um, the first you probably heard is All About My Mother that came out in 1999. And that was actually when I first heard about Pedro Almodovar. I, heard, I saw it written about in Entertainment Weekly and I'm like, well, this movie seems interesting. And my local library actually had a DVD copy. So I was able to watch it. Once again, the power of libraries allowing me to be a little baby film nerd. Uh, so that won the Oscar for Best Foreign Film in 1999. And he followed that up with Talk to Her in 2002. And while that didn't get the Oscar for Best Foreign Film, that actually won a bigger award, which was Best Original Screenplay. And if you follow the Oscars like I do, foreign films getting anything beyond Best Foreign Language Feature are rare. And he followed that up with Bad Education, where well, it didn't get that which didn't get Oscar attention, but it got the New York Film Critics Association and the National Board of Reviews Award for Best Foreign Film. And then sort of his uh, power quad came to an end with Volver from 2006, starring Penelope Cruz, that won the Cannes Award for Best Screenplay. And it got a Best Actress nomination for Penelope Cruz, who I don't actually just to editorialize. I do not think she's used very well in American films, but you see her in Spanish films, particularly Almodovar's films. She is amazing. In the US, she's pretty much relegated to bombshell. The uh, types of roles that she gets in Almodovar's movies, night and day from what she gets here. So that's my little, Penelope Cruz is more talented than people give her credit for over here. So after 
2006, like he had kind of a seven year streak of great films. And those probably are his four best movies, I would say, outside of Woman on a Verge of a Nervous Breakdown. He pretty much has been a pretty consistent director. He made Broken Embraces in 2009, reuniting with Penelope Cruz. And that's actually a movie, it's a sad movie, but it actually references his first big international hit, which is Woman on the Verge of a Nervous Breakdown. 2011, he kind of went the horror route with The Skin I Live In, once again reuniting with Antonio Banderas. And that is a remake of the film Eyes Without a Face. Um, his first, I would say, legit comedy um, in at least 10 years was I'm So Excited in 2013. And this past year, 2019, he had one of his um, biggest critical hits in years with Pain and Glory, once again starring Antonio Banderas and Penelope Cruz. It's like an Amadovar dream team. Um, and that got the best foreign um, best foreign language film Oscar nomination. But let's be real, Parasite was nominated this year. Um, everyone just had to get out of the way for that. And even better for me, a uh, Best Actor nomination for Antonio Banderas, which I kind of personally wish he'd won it. I thought he was fantastic in that movie. And Pain and Glory, probably one of his most personal, definitely his most autobiographical films. So why is he important? Uh, well, definitely prominent Spanish director. When you look at the canon of great directors, specifically in the West, it's still, you know, mostly white guys, so, or in English language director. So someone from Spain is uh, different. He's also openly gay, and he's probably the most celebrated openly gay director. Um, I wouldn't say the most well-known. I think that would go to John Waters, and I don't think he's going to be winning Oscars anytime soon. But I can dream. Um, and it's not as if he's the first act, um, director to be um, openly gay, but... Um, He's definitely more accessible than uh, Palestini, I'll just say that. Um, so um, another thing, and this is kind of like a personal thing for me, but he gave melodrama legitimacy again. So if you're familiar with melodrama, you probably think of the 50s Douglas Sirk films, the women's pictures. And when new American cinema kind of came in the late 60s, early 70s, that was really kind of brushed off as not real cinema, not really tackling real issues and Almodovar kind of took that and it's like no I am going to use this and make art out of it sort of like what Douglas Sirk did in the 50s so he he took a genre that had been kind of maligned for at least a few decades and gave it a little bit more life again um and also he for a male director and this is kind of rare most of his films either heavily feature or are about women and he is someone who I actually think he's a very good writer of women as well. And he is very empathetic to the struggles they face. I mean, if you know anything about his early life, he definitely felt a connection to women. And sometimes, you know, being gay, he's basically hung out around women a little more. He felt like he got more um, acceptance from them. So he always wanted to tell their stories and he looks at their struggles and the things that they face every day. And he's like, no, this is just as compelling as let's say a story about gangsters or a story about, um, you know, a tortured artist. And he does talk about tortured artists, um, but even then, his films tend to have a bit more of a feminine angle to it rather than just being all about the um, the guy. So um, where would I say to start for Pedro Almodovar? Well, I think the best place to start would probably be Women on the Verge of a Nervous Breakdown. And I would then say watch All About My Mother, Talk to Her, Volver, and Pain and Glory. Uh, Bad Education is a very good film, but content-wise, it's a very heavy film. I would also say, if you want to look it up, Time Me Up, Time Me Down is a lot of fun. And I liked The Skin I Live In. I know not a lot of people did. And I'm So Excited is kind of lesser on the Dovar, but I mean, he doesn't make a bad movie. It's just, no, it's not as good as his other stuff. So I would say, if I had to pick three, Woman on Verge of a Nervous Breakdown, all about my mother and talk to her. And I hope you check him out. He is one of the greatest living filmmakers. And I will be here tomorrow with what is on Netflix.